Wow, I don't think I've ever been this nervous to create a video. I am going to share with you my entire mental health journey in more detail than I probably should on the internet. I am going to be discussing my adult ADHD diagnosis, anxiety, depression, OCD, chronic illness, trauma, PMDD, all the fun things, and kind of sharing my journey from where this all started to where I am now, which is so much better. So there is kind of going to be a hopeful twist, but I'm going to get really vulnerable along the way. I'm going to be answering some questions that I got asked over on my Instagram. Before we start, if you don't have anything nice to say, please just keep moving. I am a real person here behind the screen sharing some really scary stuff in the hopes that it helps you feel less alone. My main challenges with mental health really started in law school. There were a lot of childhood things, particularly around ADHD, that I'm going to cover in another video, but my main adult mental health challenges started in law school with a lot of anxiety. I was feeling constantly overwhelmed. I felt compared to my peers, I was stressed out to a whole different level. In law school, I think I was really in this like flight response. I was super go, go, go. I was obsessed with fitness. I was obsessed with eating healthy. I was drinking caffeine and drinking pre-workout on the way to the gym. I had a pretty disordered relationship with food and my body. I was constantly taking on this and that and no one would have known that I was struggling. I looked like I had it all together. I had good grades. I was working. I was in really good shape and I wasn't feeling depressed. Like I was feeling good in a lot of ways during this time in the sense of I still experienced joy and I still had fun. So at this point it was really more just like the anxiety, the feeling like I was drowning with school and that kind of like chronic overwhelm that happens with ADHD, especially for so many people in higher education. I was really confused at what was going on. I remember not being able to remember anything on my flashcards and some of the reasons that I started getting really concerned was I started getting so anxious that I was pulling out my hair and I developed like a little bald spot. So I was starting to have panic attacks. I didn't know that's what it was at the time, but my chest always felt really tight. I was having trouble breathing and oh, was just really struggling to the point where I decided to go to the school counselor. And I went there and I sort of explained what was going on, that I can't keep up, like I can't remember anything, like I'll study a flashcard a million times and it doesn't stick. And like I was getting really distraught about how to create my outlines and what colors to use and what fonts. And I was getting good grades, but I was just felt like I was drowning. And the school counselor asked about ADHD. And I was like, no, like my grades are good. I can focus, that's not me. And she seemed to really think it was. And so she sent me off to a psychiatrist. And that is when I got diagnosed as an adult with ADHD. So I think I was about 26 maybe when I got diagnosed with ADHD and it was honestly pretty shocking. I had no idea what ADHD meant and I thought it was just like a hyperactive little boy that couldn't sit still and that was disruptive which was very much not my experience. The way that ADHD sort of manifests more for me is through getting really overwhelmed. It's like that executive function piece trying to like do order of operations. I get really overwhelmed with decisions. I have a lot of sensory sensitivities. You know, all the common things. I forget my keys, I lose things, I leave cabinets open. I was just looking to see, yep. There's one, one open, I leave cabinets open. I have really poor working memory, so I forget things a lot. I have a hard time processing information quickly. I have so many different interests and I always am wanting to try new things and sort of can like impulsively buy things or impulsively start a new hobby. It's also something that I do think has served me in so many ways. I know I'm so creative and I've tried so many new things because of that impulsivity and just like interest-based nervous system. I, at that point, 
started ADHD meds. I tried Ritalin 10 milligrams and it was really helpful to an extent. I do feel like my working memory was better. I was able to finish tests earlier. I felt like I had better recall. Random things were easier. Like I could listen a lot easier and retain information better. So I was really, really grateful. And I think those helped carry me through finals. I don't view ADHD as a disorder. I view it as a neurodivergence. It's just, it's a difference. That doesn't mean that it's not disabling for some people. It doesn't mean that it's not super difficult because it can be, but I view it just as a different neurotype. So I, I didn't get diagnosed until my last year. So this is like way towards the end of law school. And around the same time period, I was experiencing some pretty awful things. I had a stalker that was following me to school and on the train and eventually I had someone break into my house while I was not home and my cat, who's an indoor cat, got let out and was missing for three days. During this time period, I was so anxious and so stressed out and I feel like this was the first time that I really got put into this like hyper vigilant place. I was like checking behind me. I was scared to be in my house alone. And yeah, I think I just really started to realize how scary the world can be. Then it became time to take the bar exam. At this point, I already knew I wasn't likely going to practice law, but I wanted to take the bar exam anyway. I don't really know why. I honestly regret doing it. I don't think it was necessarily worth it. I didn't pass because I had such severe anxiety and studying for the bar exam I think is one one of the main things that like began to deteriorate my health. My health both physical and mental. I went home to my parents house to study for the bar exam and I was living in my parents basement and I remember just having so many breakdowns. The study guides didn't make sense to my brain I was rewriting things and rewriting things and I couldn't remember anything. Nothing was sticking. I remember studying with my dad and him telling me the same thing like 12 times and me just not being able to remember because I was just so overwhelmed and just had such severe brain fog. I remember at the time too. And I think this was a lot of mental health issues. So this was like really bad anxiety, ADHD, and I think depression started kind of kicking in here because I was so isolated. I was literally so regimented for like months. I would wake up, have my breakfast and coffee, study all day, watch Netflix, and go to bed. <laughs> and I had no social life. I was literally just doing this in my parents' basement for months, and my physical health was really deteriorating as well. I think due to the stress, possibly due to mold, and possibly due to Lyme disease. The Lyme is not confirmed, the mold is confirmed. So there was a lot of things going on with my physical health. I was getting horrible rashes, like my entire body was covered in rashes. I was having really bad muscle twitches all over the place. I was getting headaches. I was tired all of the time. I had really bad digestive issues and I was just really, really struggling. And I think part of this like really regimented routine like triggered this more obsessive part of my brain to be into this like routine that I was that that was then like safe and comfortable and was really hard for me to then break out of after the bar exam was over and after it was time to just like go back to my daily life. So I finished the bar exam. I didn't get accommodations because I wasn't diagnosed with ADHD soon enough. There was a girl behind me crying. The fan was making a noise. I was hungry and I just couldn't focus and I was so panicked. I remember like I was literally shaking and it was just such an awful experience <laughs> and just really frustrating because I know I'm smart and I know I knew the material. I just have always had a really hard time with standardized tests like that. So right before the bar exam ended, one of my friends in California was like, and I'm from New York, one of my friends in California was like, hey, my boyfriend and I just broke up. I'm looking for a roommate. Do you want to come move? And I was just in like such depths of burnout and so down. I was just like, yeah, it's <laughs> like, let me just make this big change. I'm going to go there for a little while, see how it goes. So I picked up after the bar exam, got a job and moved to 
California. And I really felt so hopeful at that time. Like it was San Diego, it was sunny. There was, I lived right by a beach. My views were beautiful. I was gonna be living with my friend. There was all this amazing food all around me. And I was so hopeful. And I remember getting there and still continuing to struggle. It transitioned into me creating a business, Authentically ADHD. So I kind of took all of this and put it into creating a business and worked really, really hard for that. But outside of that, I was still isolating. I wasn't going to things. I wasn't making a lot of friends. I was spent so much of my time in my room on my bed, either working on my business or watching TV. And I just didn't feel like myself. Nothing excited me. I didn't want to go out. I remember going for walks on the beach and just like having panic attacks for no reason and just feeling so awful. Trying to like go to a cafe to get work done, which was like my dream, like living in California, getting work, like doing work out of cafes. And I would like walk into the cafe and just like not be able to breathe. And it was so discouraging and I didn't understand what was going on. I think as I was about five months in, at the time where I maybe would have started getting adjusted and starting to make friends and get out more, I got a call from my best friend that her dad was dying of cancer. And I got on an overnight flight. I went home right away. And unfortunately he had passed by the time I had gotten there and later that week my sister died by suicide and I had seen her just a few days before that and I think this is where things started really really going downhill for me. Um, everyone was obviously traumatized and dealing with grief in our own way and I had to just like get back on a plane and head back out to California. It was a really, really weird time. My grief was very numb. It was very, I wasn't like sad or crying all the time. I just feel like I became like a robot and just stopped experiencing emotion at all. And was just like going through the motions. I tried to connect with people because I knew that would be helpful. I remember going to like a woman's circle that my friend put on and they asked, what's your rose, thorn, and seed? And <laughs> it was maybe like a month after my sister died and I just remember thinking like, do I say my thorn? Is that my sister just offed herself and my best friend's dad just died in the same week? Or do I just like make something kind of more superficial up? <laughs> because it felt like everyone else's thorn was, um, not that it wasn't bad, like it's obviously subjective, but mine would have just been like a big out of place thing. But I decided to try to like say it in the effort to try to connect, but I, I didn't go into detail. I just kind of said it briefly. And uh, I just remember feeling so gross after that and feeling like no one understood me, like I was in this different alternative universe where I could no longer connect with people. And yeah, I just really struggled to have connections at that time. A lot of people wouldn't have seen this again, like I've always been someone who appears really high functioning and you know, I was achieving a lot, but I was like a shell of myself. I remember calling my best friend at one point and just like hysterically breaking down which is really unusual for me and she knows that and basically just being like I can't function like I can't do this I feel like I need to like go to a hospital someone needs to take care of me I'm struggling so much to just like be a human and do life and she really helped me talk through things. I had actually gone off Ritalin for a while and at this point I decided to go back on and I remember it made like waking up a little bit easier and made more of the executive functioning things easier like taking out the garbage and 
even just like going for a walk didn't feel as complicated. It wasn't this big like decision fatigue mess. So that started helping a little bit, but that was a really scary time. Like I remember having thoughts that were really scary. Like, I don't want to die, but I don't really want to do this anymore. Like, this is too hard. And those thoughts were really scary. And so I'm glad I got back on the meds at that time and started getting a little bit more support and kind of stabilized back to my normal, like, depressive state. <laughs> but, you know, somewhat managing. I got a therapist for the first time. I mean, I went to that counselor like once at school. That really helped me unpack a lot of what's going on, a lot of my patterns, a lot of bigger picture things like understanding my people pleasing and tendency towards codependency and taught me how to set boundaries and all of these things. But I really had trouble opening up about the more vulnerable things. I was like intellectualizing all of my problems and like I understood everything finally, but I was unable. Like I don't think I cried in therapy for like the first two years. I was so emotionally just just like shut down. I would tell her these really horrific stories and just be like deadpan. And she's like, what are you feeling right now? And I was like, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> or I would just like awkwardly laugh because that's a defense mechanism I have. And yeah, I don't know. I think I, I don't know if I thought I would ever get better, honestly. Okay, so then I moved from San Diego to Santa Cruz to be with my partner at the time. I was starting to feel a little bit better. I think my nervous system was like settling a tiny bit. And shortly after I got there, the pandemic hit. And as with many people, the pandemic made my mental health so much worse because it like memorialized those isolation patterns and it felt actually really comfortable to me. I was like, ooh, I get to like stay in the house and watch my shows and eat snacks and like not do anything that's scary. It felt really safe and comfortable and stepping out of my comfort zone became so terrifying. So during the pandemic, I was definitely depressed and not in the way, again, where I was like sad or crying all of the time but in the way of like, I just didn't care. I was so apathetic and I was just going through the motions and yeah, just like comfortable, but not living like in survival mode. I felt very much in survival mode. So I think being in this like routine where you're not leaving the house and you're just like doing the same thing every day, really kind of like triggered this really obsessive part of my anxiety and I noticed that I started getting really anxious leaving the house. I started getting really nervous about leaving my cat at home and I got really nervous that I left the oven on or that I left the door unlocked, things like that. And this type of anxiety was really new for me. I didn't know at the time what it was. Recently, my therapist and I are exploring whether it's OCD and that feels pretty right to me. After exploring this piece a lot more, I think it was a combo of like having this like way overly structured routine with this piece of guilt around my sister's suicide, around being one of, if not the last adult to see her, and feeling like I couldn't control that, right? Like that was out of my control. And none of this was consciously happening, but ha as I've reflected on it with my therapist, I think these things like created this really like hyper vigilant like I need to control and like take care of everything that I can take care of. So my anxiety started like latching on to things that I'm responsible for taking care of, like my home, my plants, my cat, my health. I constantly felt like my felt and feel it's something that I'm still working on. So I guess actually let me transition into sort of where I'm at now, um, which is really so much better and so positive in so many ways. And I'm still really working on a lot of things. What I'm mainly working on now is this anxiety, OCD piece of things where you know, I have all of these intrusive thoughts about my cat is sick, my cat's gonna get let out and get 
you know, eaten by a coyote, my plants are dying, something's wrong with my health, I left the oven on and my house is going to burn down, like all these really, really intrusive thoughts, I've started being able to identify them as intrusive thoughts and I'm now doing exposure response prevention therapy, which is mainly for OCD and anxiety, and to me is way better than talk therapy. I'm still working with the same therapist, but we've just transitioned to the type of therapy that I'm doing. So now with all of these anxious thoughts rather than what I was doing in the past which was like talking about them a lot I now treat these as obsessions like these are obsessions and my kind of like compulsions that I would do would be like checking the door a million times sometimes I would like drive and then have to come back and check the door or check the oven or check to make sure I didn't leave my straightener plugged in. I would be constantly like checking with my vet to make sure X symptom of my cat was okay or if I had any type of health symptom I was googling and researching. And then another really sneaky compulsion is like reassurance seeking both for myself and others so like trying to make sure like okay I did do this thing right and having someone be like yeah you did or yes that's okay or yes then seems okay and so now with exposure response prevention ERP I'm really working on exposing myself to these triggers and not engaging in the compulsions which is pretty freaking hard and it has helped me so much so currently where I'm at is I am no longer depressed I don't feel depressed at all I have a huge range of emotions now. I experience so much happiness and sadness and anger and joy and all the things in between. I'm back to being my super, super sensitive self, just like feeling the highs and lows of everything. So I feel like myself again. I feel free spirited. My world feels so big. I'm, ow, I just. <laughs> I just hit, let me show you. Do you see the cactus? I just hit the cactus, but it is all good. <laughs> I got a little too, a little too excited there. I'm going to dance classes every week and climbing every week. And I have an amazing girlfriend and I have so much amazing community and I'm out of the house all the time. And I am truly living my dream life. I'm living in the forest. It's an amazing sensory environment. It's super quiet and peaceful, but I always get out and do things and I'm just absolutely loving my life right now and the main pieces that I'm still working on are this anxiety OCD piece which is improving so much you know I can now leave the house and have this thought be like oh did you do this and I'm just like hmm, intrusive thought and so it's not that it never impacts me but it's gotten so much better I'm also working on what I think is PMDD, which is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. So I have very, very severe PMS and I've tracked my hormones and my cycles a lot. And I'm pretty much good at this point through the entire month, except for PMS, where I get all of these horrible symptoms. I've been working on figuring that piece out and with ADHD, I have come to really love and accept and embrace my brain and have started developing systems for designing my life around my brain. So not forcing myself to kind of fit into this neurotypical mold, but like really truly figuring out what works for my brain. I'm currently not on any medication just because I know people will ask. Not because I'm against it, I'm actually super supportive of meds, I'm super supportive of whatever works for people, but at this moment I'm not on medication, I'm exploring PMDD stuff, like a lot of supplements and things that I've been on, like magnesium and iron and B vitamins and L-theanine, talk to your doctor if you're going to explore any of those things that have actually been seeming to help a bit. Even with the challenges that I have, like I'm so hopeful and they're just like, oh, these are just things that I'm working on. I want to kind of recap really quick quickly around some of the things that have helped me. So traditional talk therapy really helped with understanding myself more and just having that safe support person to move through things with. Learning to actually feel my feelings 
was also astronomically helpful. Just slowly starting to train my brain that I can tolerate this feeling. A lot of what helped me with that aside from therapy is self-acceptance and compassion, particularly the RAIN technique by Tara Brock, which I'll link in the description box. There was so much that I had blocked out because it was just too painful to feel. But unfortunately, when you block out those feelings, you also can't experience joy or any of the other positive emotions. Working with my cycle to the best of my ability, working with my ADHD brain to the best of my ability. Exposure and response prevention therapy has been the by far single most helpful thing for my anxiety and more like obsessive, maybe OCD stuff going on. Oh, I'm so grateful for that. I think it's like the hardest work, but it has probably made one of the biggest impacts. Other things, dancing, moving my body, climbing, getting out of the house more, making friends, building community are all things that have been so incredibly helpful and just helping me feel like myself again, helping me come alive again. I also did something called the Gupta program for some of my chronic health stuff and that addressed more of the health anxiety piece and I think that was incredibly helpful. My physical health symptoms are a lot better. They are not perfect by any means, but they don't feel like they control my life anymore. I feel like I have a handle on like the mental side of it and I don't run wild with obsessing and researching and doing all of these things. I just listen to myself, rest when I need to, and you know, I'm working with the doctor to do the best that I can with all of those moving pieces as well. If I could just like, like have a wand and get rid of it would have been the shame and the like beating myself up about where I was at or how much I was struggling or what was going on. The number one thing we can do for ourselves is be kind and compassionate to ourselves. Ask ourselves, how would I treat a friend who was going through this? We add so much suffering to the pain when we berate ourselves, when we make ourselves feel bad for not being okay, and we just kind of get in that resistance. I wanna end with a question that someone asked me over on Instagram, which is, was it worth it? Was taking this mental health journey worth it? And the answer is yes, it is so worth it. There is light at the end of the tunnel. There is so much support and healing available. You deserve that support and healing. Yes, it is work. Yes, it is hard. And it is so worth it. You deserve to feel like yourself. You deserve to have joy. You deserve to feel peace and to feel relaxed and to feel hope and to feel like you're moving towards the person you want to be. And I want you to know that I am right here working on this alongside you. I'm cheering you on. I'm in solidarity with you. Know that you are never alone. If there was anything in this video that you want more detail on, let me know in the comments and I will create kind of separate videos addressing these questions in more depth for you. But today I just wanted to give an overview. I just wanted to pass on that hope for mental health for you, that healing is possible and it is possible for you and you deserve it. Let me know any questions or thoughts that you have in the comments and I will see you in my video next week.